So you may be asking yourself, AV receiver or preprocessor, which one is better? Or maybe should I just go for an AV receiver and get an amplifier because my AV receiver has pre-outs? Maybe I can save some money and still get pretty good sound from that setup. Well, we need to discuss that. Which one is absolutely better? AV receivers with amplifiers or preprocessors with amplifiers? But first, we need to know what the differences between the two are. So a generic, more basic explanation of what an AV receiver is, is a chassis that has five, seven, nine, 11, maybe even 13, 15 channels of amplification. So it's capable of powering between five and 13 or 15 individual speakers, right? So there's built-in amps inside this chassis that also decodes video and audio and signal processing, and it's your central hub for your home theater. Now, the preprocessor is also the same thing. It's your central hub for your home theater, but there isn't amplification on the inside. It is a preprocessor, meaning it processes everything, but doesn't actually give that information to any of your speakers. It relies on outside external amplification, like a power amplifier. Now, some AV receivers have pre-outs on the back, meaning on the back of your receiver, you may have the option to plug in some RCA cables and use them towards an external amplifier and get better sound or more power using a receiver. Same thing as an AV processor. So you may be wondering, hey, if my AV receiver has pre-outs for, let's just say in this case, nine channels, okay? If I have nine channels of pre-outs, on my receiver versus nine channels of pre out on my preprocessor, why would I want to go get a preprocessor that costs more? So let's talk about that. It's actually really up to you which one is going to be better. Now, I have my own personal opinion on which one is better, but it's not that simple. A lot of people will just tell you, yeah, an AV processor is better because it sounds better. Well, that may be true, but there are a lot of other factors that make maybe an AV receiver better for you. Now, there are a lot of receivers on the market, and nowadays you can get some pretty expensive receivers, like for example, the AVM, or excuse me, the Anthem MRX series is a pretty expensive receiver. Uh, even Marantz has some really, really expensive receivers that power maybe nine or 11 channels that sound really, really good. But there are still a slew of receivers that are cheaper. So if you're more budget conscious, you're going to want an AV receiver because there are so many out there that you can kind of pick and choose what you want and don't want as far as the number of channels goes, the power capabilities, things of that nature. So if you're on the budget conscious side, you're going to want to choose an AV receiver as they have a lot of different options. AV processors kind of have a benchmark price tag, which is usually around that mid to $2,000 range and goes up from there. So if you want to keep the most money in your pocket, you're going to actually want to go for an AV receiver. So let's circle back to the question in the beginning of the video. If I have an AV receiver with pre-outs, does it really make sense to go up towards an AV processor if my AV receiver can do the same thing? Well, it's still up to you, but here's why I think you may want to consider an AV processor if the money permits. AV receivers that have pre-outs still don't have the same DAC quality or audio quality that the AV processor has. That particular manufacturer, let's, let's use Anthem in this example. Anthem has receivers and they have preprocessors, but they save their best DACs and their cleanest signal, their cleanest sound path for their higher end gear. So those pre-outs on your AVM processor will sound better than the pre-outs on your AV receiver from the same company. And same thing for the likes of Marantz and Denon and Sony and Pioneer and all the other ones, right? You're going to get the best audio quality, the cleanest sound path, the best signal, the best processing, the best hardware that that particular manufacturer can have in that processor. AV receivers are really good, but they'll never be as good as the AV processor. Look at the AV processor as the teacher and look at the AV receiver as the student. The student will never be as good as a teacher. It'll be pretty close, but you can't be better than you know who taught you, if you get that analogy. So the AV processor holds on to the greatest of greats and kind of trickles on some of that stuff down the line to the AV receivers. 
Think about it like car trim levels. You have your base models, you have your mid-tier, and then your limited, right? The limited has everything, and maybe the mid-tier has a lot of what the limited has, but not quite everything. And then your base model doesn't have anything that the limited has. So there are different tiers, and you can consider AV receivers as tiers, and then you get up to the limited when you get to the processor. Now, typically, for big, powerful home theaters that use a lot of speaker channels, you may want to go to AV processor because it's always going to have the best number of channels, 9 channels, 11, 13, even 15, and in this case, 32, 36 channels, like the Trinoff Altitude. It has, what, 32 or 36 channels of processing. You're not going to find a receiver that's going to process that many channels. AV receivers pretty much top out around 13, maybe 15, I think, channels within a chassis, but you can get like a, an Anthem or something with 15 channels. You can get a, a Trinov with 32 channels, 36 channels, and you can really expand the abilities of your home theater. If you have a big open space and you're really trying to mimic a true movie-like experience, you're gonna want a preprocessor that's not only gonna give you the best audio and the best signal and the cleanest noise floor, but it's also gonna give you the most channels that's going to power your home theater. One thing that you may not be considering as well is the preprocessor is going to have the latest and best calibration system from that manufacturer. Let's use Odyssey for example. You have your basic Odyssey multi-EQ, then you have your XT, and then you have your XT32, right? And so you can get those in receivers of course, but as you spend less money, you start getting less and less of the best work from that manufacturer. So you start getting the less, the lesser known, the, the worser type of calibration when you spend or, or save a little bit more money. Preprocessors are gonna have the absolute best calibration that that manufacturer has guaranteed. Because again, it's the preprocessor with the better DAX and the better sound, sound quality, sound path, it's gonna give you the best calibration too with the best microphone as well. Maybe the the basic tier receiver doesn't have the same microphone as the top tier preprocessor because they save all that goodness for the higher tier preprocessors. That's also something to consider. Now you may be saying, k Sky, wait, it's more expensive to get a preprocessor in an amplifier than it is to get an AV receiver, right? Well, remember, we're doing AV receiver with an amplifier versus preprocessor with an amplifier. So in case you're somebody who has an AV receiver with pre-outs and you're wondering if you should sell your AV receiver for a preprocessor, there still is a reason why you should. All the things we listed just now is viable reasons why you should ditch your receiver and get a preprocessor. The last thing that I'll note that may be a concern for you is upgradability over time. My Anthem Avium 70 preprocessor came out of the box with out 4K 120, doesn't have 8K HDMI board, doesn't have the latest HDMI built in, but I have the ability to upgrade it. Also get beta updates and things like that as Anthem updates things and adds new features, my AVM70 is one of the first products of their line to get those new upgrades. Receivers typically don't get upgraded over time. They don't usually get new HDMI boards or things like that. They typically stay the same throughout their life, which is why they, come obs they become obsolete a lot faster. So if you bought a 2022 receiver right now, next year, you most likely will have to scratch your head wondering, should I upgrade to the newest model they just brought? But processors tend to stay around a little bit longer or they'll do over the air updates or hardware updates, paid hardware updates, um, to keep your current processor staying more current as time goes on. So if you want to keep what you have longer, you may find yourself actually saving a little more money getting an AV processor the first time and upgrading it slowly with hardware and software updates as time passes from that manufacturer. So keep that in mind as well. All right, guys, that's the conclusion of this battle, AV processor versus AV receiver. Which one is best for you? Ultimately, it is your decision, but there are tons of other reasons why one may be better than the other that I didn't mention. So what I want you to do is get down there in the comment section and leave me some other reasons why one is better than the other. And while you're down there, leave me which, which one are you using in your home theater? Are you using an AV receiver with the built-in amplification? Are you using an AV receiver with external ampl amplification? or are you using a preprocessor like myself? Leave me all that down below in the comment section. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace.